Hey everybody, RetroPieGuy here. Today we're going to address the issue on the start button not working on the PlayStation ROMs on RetroPie. I've gotten this question a lot with the Pi Boy DMG lately, but the same issues can occur on a regular Raspberry Pi setup as well. And all that needs to be done is we need to go into the BIOS folder within our game collection card and add the proper BIOS files for PlayStation. It's a super quick and easy fix, and the exact same process will work on both the regular Raspberry Pi setup as well as the Pi Boy DMG handheld setup. So the first thing that we need to do is access the file system of our game collection card. You can do this one of two ways. The first option is going to be removing your micro SD card from your Raspberry Pi and then inserting it into your computer. But this will only work on certain computers. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 400 with the Raspberry Pi operating system to show how this process works because I find that it works extremely well this way. But if you have a Windows or Mac computer, then I'd recommend doing this through your Wi-Fi connection. I'll actually put a link in the description below that shows you exactly how to access your files on your game collection card through your Wi-Fi network. In this video, it walks through the process with the intention of demonstrating how to add ROMs to your card, but you just use the video for the first couple of steps to access your card through your Wi-Fi network, and then you could just follow along with the steps in this video once you have access to your card's file system to simply drop in the BIOS files to your BIOS folder. It all sounds very complicated, but you'll see in just a few moments how simple it actually is. All right, so let's get started. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my micro SD card into my micro SD card reader, which connects to my computer through the USB port. Once I do that, I'll get a prompt up here as soon as it reads the card that allows me to open up all the files. So I'm just going to click OK, remove that. And you'll see here that there's three different partitions for this particular game collection card. You might have three, you might have two. It just depends on how your card's been set up. So we're gonna go into the RetroPie section. So now if you are doing this from your Wi-Fi network, as I mentioned earlier, um, you would be following along from this point because you're accessing it remotely, not through the card itself in a reader like I am today. So uh, from this point on, these steps are going to be exactly the same regardless of how you've accessed your file system. So now we are gonna go into RetroPie here. We are gonna go into the home folder. We're gonna double click on the Pi folder. We're gonna double click on the RetroPie folder. And here you'll see that our first option is a BIOS folder here. So once we jump into the BIOS folder here, you're typically going to have a couple folders and then you'll have a bunch of uh, randomly dropped BIOS files on here. This is a fresh card I haven't done anything with yet. So I don't have anything in here just yet. So now you are going to need to have your six PlayStation BIOS files on hand to just drag and drop in here. You'll notice on my desktop here, I have a folder that has all six of these. So I'm just gonna open that up here on the side. I will put a list of these um, by name in the description below so you can easily access all of them. If you just do a simple Google search for these, you'll be able to find a bunch of different sources to download them from. If you have trouble finding any of these, just reach out to me in the comment section below and I'll see if I can help you um, get a copy of these. So. I have all of them here. Um, you might have these saved to your desktop or to a specific folder. So just access that as I have here. You're just gonna highlight all six of these and we're just gonna simply drag and drop them into our BIOS folder. That is literally all that we need to do. They don't have to go into any subfolders or anything specific for PlayStation. Just drag and drop them into the regular uh, BIOS folder, not into any of these subfolders here. And that's all we need to do. So now at this point, you can go ahead and X out and disconnect your micro SD card from your computer. Make sure that you eject it properly like this. Um, if you're doing this remotely through the Wi-Fi network, you could just go ahead and exit out. Everything will save upon exit. All right, so the final step of this process is once we fully boot up our system, and again, you can do this on the Pi Boy DMG or on your regular Raspberry Pi setup. I'm gonna be using the Retro Pi Guy 512 gigabyte game collection card to demo this process now. And what we need to do is we need to jump into our PlayStation ROMs and jump into RetroArch and disable the multi-tap ports. So it's a super easy process. We're just gonna jump into any game on here. This is the 007 one, just because it's the first one here. And we are going to hold our hotkey button and X once the ROM fully loads in. And we're just gonna hold down our hotkey button and X at the same time. That's gonna open up our RetroArch menu here. Your RetroArch menu may look different depending on which card you're using and which version of RetroArch you have. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna scroll down to options. We're gonna select options. And then we are gonna go down to 
show other input settings. So you'll see that this is disabled currently. We're just going to enable it. And once that's enabled, you'll notice that right below here, there's multi-tap one, multi-tap two. Both of them are um, currently disabled on here. Sometimes you're gonna find that they're disabled, sometimes they're gonna be enabled. Um, if you have them enabled, what you actually need to do is you have to go back to your ROM first. It's kind of a quirky little thing, but if you try to make the changes right now, it's not gonna actually work. So we need to exit this. In order to exit it, we're just gonna do the exact same thing that we did to open it. We're gonna hit our hotkey and X at the same time. Brings us right back to our game. Now we're gonna go right back into RetroArch, hotkey and X at the same time. And now we can go down and disable these multi-tap ports here. So we are gonna go here and just select it. In this case, it's already off. A lot of times it'll be on. So if it is on, make sure that it's off here since they're already off. I don't have to actually do anything. So we're just going to do that for multi-tap one and multi-tap two. So once both of those multi-tap ports have been disabled, we're just gonna go up to the top here and we're gonna hit save game options file. So you'll notice that that populates in the left-hand side, uh, bottom corner there. So now we can just go and exit RetroArch. Again, hotkey and X brings you right back into your ROM. I'm gonna actually um, jump back out to our game collections by hitting my hotkey to exit this ROM. And now you would actually just jump right back into your ROM again and you'd be able to fully access this. So that's all that we need to do. Just wanted to walk through this step by step for you. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us. I'm always easy to get a hold of, always happy to help any way that I can. That's going to do it for today. So if you found this video helpful, smash the like button for me. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of tutorials like this, gameplay demos, product reviews, just a lot of great stuff based around retro gaming. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.